top five things to do in Tenerife that are not the parks. One, beaches, or in Spanish, playa. Tenerife is famous for its black sand beaches. These have been created from eroded volcanic rocks from Mount Taid. I stayed in Los Gigantes and my nearest beach was Playa de las Guías, which is a small beach next to the marina. It had decent facilities including toilets and a nearby cafe. The water is incredibly clear, but this beach is not the best to swim at as there are large stones under the water, making it difficult to get in and out of. Top tip. The black sand gets extremely hot, like burn your feet hot, so shoes slash flip flops are a must if you don't want to look like a fool running across the beach to get to the water. Likewise, a beach towel is needed to sit on slash lay on. For a beach to swim at, I would recommend Playa de la Arena, which is just up the coast. It does not have many stones. I swam there one morning, as in Tenerife it doesn't get very cold at night so it was pleasant to swim in the morning still. If you have a car and venture over the mountain to the north side of the island, there are more beaches. We visited two beaches, Playa de San Marcos, which is a pebbly port beach, and Playa Marina Jimena, Playa Chica, Playa de Castillo, which are three beaches separated by rock breakwaters. These beaches are located near Loro Park so parking can be tricky, as people avoid paying to park in the official car parks or park in the surrounding areas. They were very commercialised and I preferred the beaches near Los Gigantes. 2. Natural swimming pools, or in Spanish, piscina natural. Dotted around the coastline of Tenerife are natural swimming pools that are filled by the sea crashing over a usually concrete wall that separates them from the ocean. I visited Piscina Natriala Ticantio Las Giantes. I did not swim as the waves were too rough, but other people seemed to be having fun despite the danger. Top tip, the pools are filled with stones and pebbles forming an uneven surface, so water shoes are recommended to reduce the risk of slipping. 3. Masca. Masca is a small village located on the slopes of Mount Tide. The village is located 650 metres above sea level, so sits below the cloud level which flows down the hillside. It has become very touristy with facilities to match, including an information centre and cafes. There is limited parking which was full when I visited in May 2022. Despite my criticisms above, I think it's still worth a visit even as a stop on the way up or down from the peak, as the road provides wonderful views. 4. Mount Tide. Mount Tide is a completely different environment to the coast. When you pass the cloud altitude of 1,700 metres, the vegetation changes to pine trees, and as you climb even higher, it changes again to scrubs growing around orange rocks. We came from Masca, which was below the clouds and was quite cold, needing a jumper and trousers. As we climbed, it got warmer and warmer. Top tip, there is a cable car that takes you to the peak, or at least as high as the main trail goes. This was out of action for maintenance when I visited, and it looks like you have to book your tickets well in advance. The roads were very well maintained, better than a lot of roads in the UK. We stopped at many of the viewing points which had trails leading from them. Inspired by Craig Adams, I created my own hiking montage which you've been watching. Point 5. Los Gigantes. 
We stayed at the Royal Sun Hotel, which overlooked the Los Gigantes Cliffs, creating probably my second favourite hotel view after La Fodia Sea Resort in Croatia. The town that shared the name is pretty with a church and cafes. The Instagram spot for people not staying at the hotel appeared to be at one of the streets towards the cliff. It looked like there was a path along the cliff in the past, but it had been eroded by rock slides. So now the path only goes about 150 metres to the viewpoint. Bonus point, a trip to Lagomera. If you stayed on the west coast of Tenerife, the island you see in the horizon is Lagomera. We worked out that it would be cheaper to book a bus tour that included the ferry hire instead of hiring a car and booking the ferry ourselves. The ferry leaves from Las Cristianos and takes a little under an hour to cross. We travelled on the fast ferry which was very stable as it was a catamaran. We were slightly disappointed by not being able to go outside but we still managed to see a few dolphins through the dirty windows. On La Camera, we were taken all over the island in a loop, returning to San Sebastian. The guide was very informative and catered for Spanish, English and German speakers by repeating the information in each language. We stopped at all the sightseeing stops, including overlooking San Sebastian, Medio de Moro de Aganda, and many high places above the clouds. The floor is very different to Tenerife, with a lot more green. Our trip included a meal at Luca Grande, which was decent, but not to my taste. Unfortunately, I did not get a picture of the meal, but here is a shot of the woodland it was situated in. The bus dropped us back off at San Sebastian for an hour free time before the catching the ferry back. La Camara was really beautiful, and I wish I could have spent more time at each of the viewpoints, but as a day trip, I think it was well worth it. We paid 79 euros each and went with but it looks like most tours operated the same route.